we're talking about action today. Action and how that shows up in toes or temper and how that shows up in toes. So we'll wait just, just a second to see if anybody joins live because uh, action is a great subject, especially if you're a business person. One of the things that people struggle with um, in business is taking action, right? So when action is being, when like, you know, procrastination or let's say somebody, you know, ruffles your feathers or gets you all upset, that can affect action and how that shows up. Um, overwhelmed this time of year, everybody's, you know, kind of overwhelmed with the amount of added stuff that happens because of the holidays that can affect how our action is taken or how our temper shows up in the world. Gosh, there's so many, so many cool things. Uh, how our focus, how, how we focus or don't focus in order to get things done and how smoothly that goes. So let's talk about where that shows up in the toes. So on in toe reading, we have, we have five elements the big picture is the ether. Here, I'll show you the toe reading map. The big picture is the ether toe. That's all about our destiny in the big picture. The air toe is our communication or creativity. The fire toe is the action or the temperament. That's what we're talking mostly about today. The water toe is about our relationships and how we go with the flow. And the earth toe is all about either our faith and trust or our prosperity and abundance, depending on if it's on the right foot or the left foot. So just quickly, you need to know that the right foot is about our external self, the left foot is about our internal self. And the only time that that is different is if for some reason you're a true left-handed person, meaning you throw a ball with your left hand or you hit a golf ball with your left hand, or you know sometimes people who can write with their left hand can also write with their right hand. Those people are always gonna be right-handed in the toe reading, as far as toe reading is concerned, right? Because if, if we can use our, our right hand, then that's our more masculine dominated self. If uh, our left side is our more feminine and um, yin self, our internal self, so the thing that we need to know for action, so if you have any questions, type them below. Thank you for joining whoever is here. So in action, the way that it's the middle, it's the middle finger toe. <laughs> you can see it all there. It's, it's right there, right? That action shows up as temper sometimes. It shows up as you know, maybe not taking action. Okay, so a procrastinator, let's, let's talk about how that shows up. So on this, on these toes, we have the left foot and the right foot. So when we're talking about the right foot, that's her external self foot, and that toe, you can see it kind of goes down toward the earth. So it comes out, comes out, comes out, and then it kind of takes a dive to the earth. So this is somebody who is probably gonna be a procrastinator, putting things off until the last second. You know, I, I know that you guys know this. When, procra when, when procrastination happens in your life, it's really exciting to have that adrenaline rush of having to try to struggle to get something done right at the last minute but it can really sabotage how successful we come across in the process of what that looks like. So if you have or know somebody who struggles with procrastination, that's how it's gonna show up in their, in their toe. Another way that procrastination can show up is when the padding on the toe on either side of the nail is a little bit thicker in the past tense or a little bit thicker in the present tense. So let me tell you a little bit about what that means. So past is stuff that we hold within us. Future is stuff that is outside of us, okay? So when the toe leans toward the outside of you as opposed to the inside of you, and let me just show you quickly the toe reading map, what that looks like is if it, if the padding leans toward the big toe or is thicker on the big toe side, that's past thinking. If it's 
thicker or, uh, or bigger on the future side or the baby toe side, that's when we're, that's when we're a little bit too future oriented in how we deal with ourselves. So, um, or our action in our life. So for this person, it's, it, shows up as a little bit of a hesitation when it comes to getting things done in her life. Uh, maybe uh, some of that has to do with the communication toe, the second toe, because the communication toe kind of dives toward the ground. So maybe there's a little bit of a disconnect in how the communication, basically when she wants to take action, it's not happening because she's not communicating it or because the communication is self-sabotaging. So it's a little bit too negative, right? So some of the things that show up in our toes can really, really help us adjust how we deal with how it shows up in our actual life. So if we know that we're using too many uh, negative words, we can maybe become really, really aware of them, thank them for trying to keep us safe, and then adjust it to include a more positive way of saying it or the positive spin on what it is that is showing up negatively. So for example, one of the things that I hear people say is I'm always late. Okay. That's well, you're just kind of asking the universe to make you late. So what, you know, there will be extra traffic when you go places, there will be you know, things that get in the way, maybe an accident, or, you know, maybe somebody plants a seed in your head that, that it's gonna be really heavy traffic at whatever hour it is. It's really interesting, because when I first moved back to California from Birmingham, Alabama, it that happened to me, um, or rather, it didn't happen to me, because my I knew that the belief system was gonna be uh, very, very impactful on how that showed up in my reality. So when everybody was saying, oh, Los Angeles is so crowded and you can't ever get anywhere and don't ever take this freeway, blah, 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 blah. I'd be like, okay, great, good to know. And I'm gonna do it anyway. <laughs> because I know that even when I get on the freeway, even though I know that there may be extra cars, that may not normally be there, it's never ever gonna take me as long as it seems to, or the, as the, I guess the way, the mentality, the way that people think that it's gonna take here. Because there are occasions where something happens that creates a stop in the traffic. I just, I don't, I'm trying, I'm trying not to say it in a, in a you know, kind of sassy or egocentric way, but I know it's not gonna happen to me. So it doesn't. And when we adjust our belief systems around that to experience it that way, it works that way. <laughs> uh, so a little bit of law of attraction going on there. So let's move on to a different set of toes and talk a little bit about how these toes show up as far as action toes. And if you have any questions, let me know in the chat below and it, will sh it should show up on my screen so that I can, uh, so that I can help with answering some of those questions. So these toes are really, really interesting because these action toes are, you can see that the nail on the action toe is, is fairly small, okay? One of the ways that, one of the things that that means as far as it relates to action is that maybe the, the if the toes are kind of like the eyes, they're the windows to the soul or they're the windows to the desires, the hopes, the dreams, the aspirations. So if the toenails are that symbolically, when they're small or when they're smaller than the padding around them, that usually signifies that they have small dreams or that they're key, they're kind of playing a little bit smaller. Now what's super, super cool or interesting is that when, when this person adjusts their vision to include a much bigger, broader idea of what action looks like in her life, or maybe a bigger, broader idea of what relationship looks like, because it looks like she has a few kind of tiny toenails here, right? That, that tiny toenail thing is going on. So when 
when she adjusts that thinking to think a little bit bigger, a little bit more broad, a little bit more outside her comfort zone, if you will, and she starts to create those imaginations and starts to bring those images into her existence, into her life, even if it's only in her imagination, her nail beds will start to widen up. And so her vision for herself and her life will start to open up a little bit more. It will start to be a little bit wider perspective. When, I, when it comes to that kind of stuff, I kind of think of the visual that I get anyway is the, the horse that's in a city with the blinders on. So they keep the horse super safe, but very, very focused on whatever it is wherever it is that the that the driver of the horse wants them to go. So when it comes to small toenails, that's kind of what, that's the image that I think of is, you know, you almost have blinders on. So in order to take those blinders off, you really have to start using your imagination and you have to start envisioning what it looks like or, or how, not even how it could happen, just dreaming, just being in that present moment of dreaming and, and being really excited about that dream and conjuring up images that make you feel good and make you happy doesn't matter what kind of difficult circumstances that you're currently living in. Uh, if you can dream it, it exists, right? So opening up that vision to something a little bit wider, a little bit more exciting, something super, super fun and cool, that's what will help widen those, um, widen those imaginations for her and widen the toenails and it will literally physically manifest in her toes. So that's what happens when that happens. Um, looks like, looks like I can do, looks like I have time to do one more. You know what? Let's talk a little bit about the hologram of the body and how that shows up in toe reading. So this is kind of how, this is how the hologram of the body shows up on both feet. Okay. You can... I, I stopped talking because my bird was, I think my bird, when I talk, he talks right along with me. <laughs> He's a teeny tiny little finch bird. He's so cute, but he is jabber John. Anyway, um, so in toe reading, the, the hologram of the body is where if I were to hold it up to these feet, for example, the head and or, or the shoulders rather would be right across the bridge of where the toes meet the foot. And when I think of where that, you know, it sh it's kind of the shoulders right here, right? So I think of that as kind of the point of when it, when it comes off of our heads and, and it comes out of our minds, it kind of gets manifest in our body. And so the rest of the, rest of the um, foot contains, you know, it's kind of where in reflexology, that's where our body shows up. That's where the core organs and systems show up in the body is on, you know, within the foot itself. The head shows up in the toes. And so the thoughts, feelings, and emotions, as well as anything having to do with your head. So if you, if you get headaches a lot, one of the ways that you can um, help alle alleviate headaches is by pinching right between the toes. I'll show these feet because they have a little bit of space between them. So right in that little webbing, right between the toes, if you can kind of take your baby finger and just kind of put it in between your toes and kind of just wiggle it around, um, or if you can even, if you can pinch it, it's even better because it, it helps to loosen up any kind of tension there. Oftentimes when we have a headache, it has to do with kind of our sinuses and that's where our sinuses show up is right between in that webbing between the, the hands and the feet really. So if you wanted to do it on your hands first and see if that maybe relieves a little bit of tension in headaches, you can then go down to your feet if you if you can 
you know, reach your feet and it's comfortable and it doesn't put you in a position of making the headache worse. Um, but yeah, there are really, really great sinus um, locations right between the webbing. And those are, you know, what, what we call trigger points where we can loosen up some of the nerves that are showing that are, you know, tight and tense. Okay. Um, another thing that I noticed about, um, these toes is that there's a little, I talked a little bit about it earlier in the week, and that is when we get a sense of overwhelm or when we feel like things aren't quite going exactly how we intended them to go, or perhaps we're taking on too much responsibility or whatever overwhelm looks like in your life. Two things to keep in mind about that. One is overwhelm is a misconception of abundance. So I welcome you to consider taking a step back from feeling overwhelmed and recognize that you have abundance right there. It's right there, right in front of your face if you're feeling overwhelmed. It's a great way to stop yourself from going down the rabbit hole of, of thinking negatively about whatever it is that you're dealing with. So overwhelm is a misconception of abundance. So if we focus on abundance and how many wonderful things that you are either have to take responsibility for or are, you know, in the middle of planning or, you know, whatever, whatever it is, just recognize the abundance in that. And that can really, really shift the way that we view overwhelm in our lives. Now, how it shows up on the toes oftentimes is a very, very long nail. Oh, hi, Kim. Thanks for joining. So the long nail, you made it. I know you were going to try to make it this week, so yay. <laughs> um, so yeah, the nail will be longer than the padding. So one of the things that I would welcome you to do, I know it seems ridiculous, but it's absolutely true. Your nail, when your nail gets long, here's what happens energetically or in the, you know, in in the idea that our bodies hold the hologram of all the things going on in our head, in our mind, the if the if the nails are the windows to the soul or the windows to opportunity and they get longer than our than our physical body and they grow longer, then it can get be a feeling of us getting stuck in our heads. Okay? So when we get stuck in our heads, we have trouble getting traction to take action. We have trouble planning because we're like, there's so much going on, we don't know maybe even where to start that challenge, right? So yeah, so, so that is how it looks. So literally, if you trim your toenails back, it's amazing how much you can uh, kind of rein in the wild horse that's driving your cart and maybe start to drive your cart yourself. <laughs> it just, the metaphors that come to my mind crack me up. I don't, <laughs> it's all intuitive, guys. <laughs> okay, so, so what I was gonna talk really quickly about the shoulder of responsibility and where that shows up on the foot. So while it's not any one particular toe that it shows up on, I do want to point this out because this is something that we can help our, we can help our bodies and our minds energetically and physically. Okay. So if the shoulder of responsibility is from about where a bunion would normally start to about where the corn would normally start. Okay. So a corn would be on your baby toe side. A bunion would be on your big toe side. It is that right there in the hologram of the body is where the shoulder of responsibility shows up, okay? So when we have bunions or corns, we're talking about protection around responsibility or feeling overwhelmed around responsibility, okay? So when it shows up, and you know, this is where it goes back to the toe reading where if toes lean toward the big toe, it's all about what's happened in our past. Whereas if toes lean out toward the baby toe, it's all about our future, 
Okay, so a bunion, which is right on that big toe side of things, would be about past responsibility. Whereas the corn is about responsibility that we're concerned about in our future. It also happens to usually show up as today's responsibility or an overwhelm of responsibility in today's day, you know, like right here, right now. So that's how, that's how that corn forms. So now let's talk a little bit about what that means. Like the corn is a little, it's basically a protective layer of skin or a lot of protective layers of skin. Whereas the bunion is a disformation of the joint, right? So in the bunion, it's literally a disconnect in the, re in the idea around responsibility from childhood or from the past. The corn is, a, is a, a protection. It's a protection layer or maybe an overwhelm or a too much responsibility or uh, what's the other thing? Or a stubbornness. That's the thing, that's the word that's coming up or a stubbornness around maybe action to take, or maybe you're saying yes too often. Maybe you're taking on too much responsibility. Maybe you're not saying no enough, um, or vice versa. Maybe you're saying no too often and not saying yes enough. Who knows? But it is, um, that's what will show up as the, the corn, is that, that little bit of stubbornness. So it's that protective layer and you're just kind of like, uh, it feels weird, it feels awkward, it doesn't feel good. So it's it shows up as a protective layer. Um, so do you have any questions? Anything coming up as far as, we were talking about action or temperament and how that shows up in the toes and what it looks like and how to resolve, oh, look, I'll, I'll mention how to um, physically help with the bunion or and or the corn. So with the with the bunion, one of the things that you need to do is a little forgiveness work within yourself around uh, past responsibilities. So let's say um, let's say there's a story going on in your head. Sometimes when you touch that area of your foot, you can, you can feel or, you know, maybe a story comes right to mind as soon as you touch it. And maybe it's pertinent or maybe it's going to lead to the story that's pertinent. So recognize that that story is coming up for a reason. When you touch your toe or you touch whatever area of your foot is, is causing trouble or maybe it's you know, maybe it's showing up as in pain uh, because it's trying to get you to recognize that this is something that's no longer serving you. It's something that you're ready to release so it will show up as pain, whatever that looks like, whether it's a scratch, uh, a sore, uh, you know, people say, but it's my shoes. Well, yeah, but you chose to wear those shoes. So it's, it's, a, it's a subconscious decision and therefore a subconscious reaction to that decision, right? We could we could get into super super deep stuff here, but <laughs> we'll we'll keep it basic. So anyway, when you when you recognize what story is being held in that space, one of the things that you can do is just thank yourself, your past self, your baby self, your little kid self, whatever. You can just go back to that place and kind of go through a little bit of a story shifting where, you know, maybe something happened when you were four or six or eight or seven. Seven, seven is the number that's coming up for me. So maybe it was when you were seven and somebody gave you responsibility that was too much for you to handle. Well, a seven-year-old is gonna view it a lot different than the adult version of you. So maybe, it's time to go back and kind of revisit that story that the seven-year-old has been telling you for however many years of your life. And when we do that, oftentimes it will shift just enough that we'll be able to release this, this anger or frustration or wounded piece of our soul because the seven-year-old held on to the story in whatever way the seven-year-old held on to the story, right? Hey, Nicole, thanks for joining. So, so yeah, so that's one of the ways to shift a bunion or a corn. 
Um, the, the other way to shift a bunion or a corn is to literally hold it. Okay, so if you, oh, thank you. Jean, I used Jean's glue and boy, does it feel like glue. My hair was very fluffy today, but thank you. Thank you, I will take the compliment. Um, so yeah, so uh, the, I was saying, the bunion and the corn and how to release it. Oh, okay, so, so one of the ways is just to go back and do some of that forgiveness work. The second way is to literally hold your foot and just kind of send it love, energetic love. And if you don't know what that means, um, think for a second about your left foot. And as you think about your left foot, you start to feel it tingle. And as it starts to tingle, you can choose where that tingling goes. So maybe that tingling goes up to your knee. Maybe it goes all the way to the back of your neck. Maybe it's really just in the one spot, either the back of your neck or your knee or your foot. It's you can control and it's literally like energetic pulses. It's literally your nervous system at work, but we can control it. And that's the thing that I think a lot of people don't understand or don't realize. So, so as we control the energy, we can literally hold our foot or our soul. It's not a mistake that it's called a soul <laughs> um, in our hand and baby it a little and just give it that little bit of extra TLC. Um, this works amazingly with kids when, when kids are, uh, defiant or upset or really, really angry or really hurt or frustrated, holding their feet or one foot at a time, oh, it's crazy how easy it works. Now, obviously, it, it takes a minute for them to calm down when they're in that hyper state of ah, angst, right? As it does for us all. <laughs> but anyway, so any questions I can answer before we wrap up here? Anybody have anything they want to know about how action shows up or what that looks like or how to overcome it? All right. Well, if you do, type it in the comments below and let me know and I will address it at the next Toes Day. <laughs> so... We'll wrap it up today. Thank you so much for being here and blessings to you.